It's 300 years since the first de facto Prime Minister of Great Britain came to power. Here are six facts on Robert Walpole. He was the son of Colonel Robert Walpole and Mary Burwell. He inherited his father's estate and parliamentary seat of Castle Rising in 1700, and he soon transferred to represent Kingsland in Parliament in 1702, which was his seat for the next 40 years. At the time, Parliament had two parties, the Tories and the Whigs, and Walpole was affiliated to the latter. When the Tories took power in January 1712, he was impeached for corruption as Secretary of War, found guilty, expelled from the Commons, and sent to the Tower of London. He was released after six months and became aligned to the new King George I in 1714. He was adept to keep the peace and status quo, pitting opponents against each other and taking advantage of any misdemeanours his Tory party rivals made. This built up to his position of the First Lord of the Treasury and Chancellor of the Exchequer in 1721, the de facto Prime Minister of the country. Around the time of his new positions, the country was caught up in the speculative frenzy associated with the South Sea Company, a joint stock company with monopoly rights to trade with Spanish America. A scheme was set up in 1720, whereby the company would take charge of a large part of the national debt. Although Walpole had favoured letting the Bank of England take over the debt, he was no more prudent than many others and invested heavily in South Sea stock. It was his adeptness of saving some of his weak colleagues from ruin and his own financial acumen that brought him to prominence and maintained his position for over 20 years. He lived in Downing Street from 1735. 10 Downing Street was a gift from George II to Walpole personally, and it was Walpole's idea to make it the home of the First Lord of the Treasury and leader of the government. Walpole consolidated weak power through a system of royal patronage. He pursued a policy of peace abroad, low taxation, and reducing the national debt, and he knew the importance of keeping Parliament on his side. Opposition eventually began to develop within Walpole's own party. A trade dispute with Spain was used by his critics to force him to declare war in 1739, known as the War of Jenkins' Ear. A poor general election result in 1741 made his position more unstable. A number of Whig politicians opposed Walpole's conduct of the war and he resigned in February 1742. He was created Earl of Orford in the same year and continued to maintain influence over George II until he died on the 18th of March 1745. Six Facts returns very soon. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and share it with the hashtag TeamStructor and also hit that subscribe button so you know when a new video comes out.